there's a, a children's game called Tumble Tower, where you, you have uh, uh, rectangular blocks, and these are built up into a tower. And then the idea is that each player removes one of those, and the idea is the one that makes the tower collapse is the, is the loser. Biodiversity and biodiverse habitats and ecosystems are like those towers. They're put together what appears to us to be in a random way. But of course we know that all those blocks are interconnected and they will continue to stand. You can pick species out of it, have them go extinct if you will, or remove them from that habitat, and it will continue to function. And it will do that for quite some time, probably. But eventually, if you keep knocking species out of it, pulling blocks out of the tower, it will collapse. And when it does collapse, it's catastrophic. That environment is no longer of any use to us. It can no longer serve the purpose of modifying the climate, providing us with clean water, f cooler air, etc. So this is, this is really critical for, for people to understand. Names have sort of become viewed as not particularly scientific in the past. And that's because there is a certain element of philosophy. Yeah, what, what is a species? How do you go about determining which things should be named and which things shouldn't be named? So on and so forth. All this is, does have a philosophy about it. But ultimately, names are a very integral part of what we do um, in a science context. Because if we don't have a name or the name isn't correctly applied, then everything gets out of kilter with us. And people can't make use of what they know. Other people can't find out what other people know, so on and so forth. In the early days, before DNA was used for assessing how things were related, there, there were competing family trees, in effect. And therefore, we didn't have one idea about the relationships of the plants. We had multiple competing ones. And one of them could have been right. All of them could have been wrong. Um, some of them could have been right in this bit and some right in that bit and wrong in the other parts. DNA allowed us to make the tree more accurate. And that's a big thing. One thing that the, you couldn't do before was to ask the question, when did diversity evolve? When did these places that are now rich in species become that way? That is important because we, we want to get everything in its right relative positions um, and we want to understand how the branching pattern is, has come about. But we also want to know what are the interactions between climate and specific changes in the climate and speciation and high diversity today. So it's, these, are, these are really important questions that the DNA era has brought us the ability to answer, but we couldn't even think of doing before the DNA era came along. So in terms of really understanding and explaining biodiversity, DNA has been essential.